Hello, I am going to show you how to use lists, lists, lists in Python. And in fact, let's be clear. So I'm a physicist and I'm going to make lists for physicists. And there's a lot of things that, you know, lists can do that I don't actually do. Um, a lot of string and manipulation and stuff like that. But my goal is to help you understand lists so that you can use them in numerical calculations. You can do cool physics stuff. Now, you might be able to do lists uh, for other things too, and that's cool, okay? Uh, but if you wanna do more complicated programs, and that's what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm building up, I'm gonna show you some super complicated stuff. Well, they're not super complicated, because it's me, right? I can't do super complicated stuff. Uh, so let's just get started. What is a list? Well, first of all, here I am in, I'm in a GlowScript vPython. Uh, this is, see it says GlowScript vPython right there. This is actually using trinket.io, so I can have the output window right there, but you could go to glowscript.org, it's the same thing. This is not actually Python, okay? This looks like Python, but it's actually translated into JavaScript. So that means that there are some weird things that can happen. You can't load modules and stuff like that, so just I just want to get that out there. It's not exactly the same thing. Let's just start with a uh, thing. Thing equals two. That's a variable. Okay, and I can print that, print thing. So your basic Python stuff, and I'm gonna run it with the play button right there, and the output's over here. Very great, okay. Now, I can put this thing equals a list of numbers. And so not just one number, but multiple numbers. So let's just say I'm just gonna pick some numbers here. One, two point, or three point three, negative one, 0.8. So there I have one, two, three, I have four numbers, and now I can print that. And there you go, there's your list. So this list is, it's, it's literally a list of things. And it doesn't even have to be numbers. Okay, I can actually, and it, it could be a combination of things. Watch this. Let's just change this to, uh, let's make a new list. Thing two is another list. It's going to have the number one, and then it's going to have the word hello, and then oh, let's put a vector in there. So let's say r equals vector one, two, three. Vectors are built in class in Python, in GlowScript vPython, which is pretty awesome. Let's put that vector in there. Let's put r like that. Uh, what else can we put in there? Uh, we could put another list. Check that out. Okay, now let's print that out. So then it gets the first item, the second item, the third item, and then the other list. So I can have a list inside of a list. So you can you can imagine the endless possibilities that you could have, right? Okay, but what if I want to just print out that vector right there? So how do I address this individual thing? So in Python, the index order, this is the number zero, index zero. So let's print out, let's just do that. Let's print thing, if I do thing, uh, and so when you make this list, you have to use these square brackets up here. And if I use the name of the variable, and you can name it whatever you want, as long as it conforms with the normal Python rules. So you can't start with the number, and you can't use uh, a word like while or for or something that's already reserved. Uh, but other than that, you can have at it. So if I do thing and then square bracket and then zero, this will just print out, this will just address that first element right there. So let's run this and it just prints one, okay? So that first element is the index zero. If I want to print out uh, the vector r, that'd be zero, one, two. So I would go to two, and that's that. And this is one, zero, one, two, three. If I print out three, it'll print out thing, the first list. But what if I wanna just print out that last element right there? Well, then this is a list. So I can index a list inside of a list. So this is zero, one, two, three. So if I do three, three, it should just print out 0.8. I can do that. Okay, so I'm not gonna get into list inside of a list, but you can imagine how useful it would be for things like matrices, uh, which if you use other modules in Python, you can actually have a matrix class, uh, but it's not in GlowScript vPython, so you'd have to do some trick like this. But that's not what I want to talk about. Okay, so there I've covered what is a list. I've covered 
uh, how do you address items in the list. Uh, now let's do some other things with the list. Um, let me just tell you, I'm going to have two videos. This first video is just a rough introduction to lists. And then I'm going to use them to do some cool stuff with projectile motion um, just, just for fun. Okay. So I'm going to have two videos. Um, what else? Let's do this. Uh, let's call it, um, I don't want to call it, let's call it length equals len thing2. So len is a function, a built-in function that returns the length of a list. So in this case, let's just, re let's just print this, print length, and I get four. Okay, so it's zero, one, it's, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four. There are four things in the list. And that's going to be important because sometimes you need to know how long a list is. If I add something to that, uh, let's just put a number, another number in here. Let's say two. Now I'll run it. It's going to be longer. It's going to be five. Okay. Uh, addressing. Oh, there's another way to address items in a list. What if I want the last item in the list? I don't even know how many there are. I just want the last one. I could say, well, what's the, I could say zero, one, two, three, uh, four. Or I could say this. I could say print thing two minus one. So minus one tells it to start from the other end and go backwards. So this is the minus one item. This is minus two. This is minus three. And so you get two. Okay. We're moving along wrong here. Oh, it, <clears throat> you can indeed change an item. Watch this. I want to change this hello to 2.2. So that's the index number one, right? Because it's zero, then one. I can say thing to one equals 2.2. And then I'm going to print thing to. So you can indeed change items in a list. Now it doesn't have the hello there anymore. It has 2.2. So that's cool. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. Let, let's just let's just do an example. And I'm going to give you this code, but I'm deleting all that right now because I don't really care. Let's make a list of 10 numbers that consists of 10 numbers where each number is a random number. Okay, so um, there's a lot of ways to do this. First of all, if I say print random, the random function, this will print a random number between 0 and 1. And then so there's 0.16847, run again, it's something different. Okay, yay. So let's say n equals 10. What happened there? n equals 10. That's the number of elements I want. Now what I want is a empty list. Okay, and again, there's a lot of ways to do this. Okay, I not always do it the best way. I do it the way that makes the most sense to me, and you should do that too. So I'm going to make an empty list. I'm going to call it rando. I can't call it random. That's reserved. Rando rhymes with Mando from The Mandalorian, so that's why I'm doing that. And it's just two brackets. There's nothing in the list. You know, I could print that, and there's nothing there, though. Now I'm going to make a counter. I'm going to make a counter of n equals, let's say, 1. Let's see, make sure. n equals 1. So I have lowercase n is my counter. Big capital N, or big case, as I almost said, is the maximum number in the list. Now I will just say while n is less than or equal to big N, I'm making a loop that's going to go through and this should do it in times. Let's just do this. Print n. And then I'm going to say n equals n plus 1. Now I'm going to increase the n number. So this is going to print 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, and so forth. Hopefully we'll give it to 10 just to check and make sure things are working. So there it did it. So now we have we do have 10 numbers. See, that's a great way to test these things. And let's say I wanted to do it with 1,000 numbers. I could first do it with 10 to make sure it's working and then change it to n equals 1,000 to make sure that it should still work. So, But instead of printing n, what I'm going to do is this. Uh, and you could do this two ways. Let's say temp equals random. There, I just made a random number. Now I'm going to add that random number to my list. Rando equals rando plus temp. So you can add in a list item in square brackets. So remember, rando is a list already. And if I add this this tiny little list to it, it just sticks it onto the end. 
and let's do that and then print it. Let's print random numbers equals rando. And there you go. There are my random numbers. Let's just run it again to make sure that it really is random. So 0.42 was the first one. If I run it again, I should get something different. Yep, I do. Uh, now, you, if you didn't like that, you could do this. I mean, it's not hard. I could say, just put rando in here. No, I'm sorry, random. I don't have to make it a temporary variable, and it still works. Uh, now, there is another way to add to a list. I, I like this way. I don't know why. It just makes more sense with the way I do other things. But you can do rando.append, which appends something to the end, and it would be random, the random number, and then run that. That should work, too. Cool. Okay, so there we made a list of random numbers. Um, let's see, there are some other things that I think are just kind of important. Uh, I don't really use them that much. There's, let's just print these, let's just do these. Um, if I do rando.pop2, this removes item number two from the list. So this would be, so if I run this again and print it, I'll have one less. And it, it's hard to tell which one is it. Well, I, I think I can see it. Let's just put rando. Okay, so here's my first list, 0, 1, 2, so the 0 0.01487. And the next time it's the same number, the same number, but then I skipped that one because I popped it out, right? That's gone. Uh, I could also insert, let's do rando dot insert two three this puts the number three at the position two and now insert you got to spell things right though in cert and now let's print rando again why do they call the mandalorian mando i mean what do they call all the other mandalorians there you go there's there's my three right in there um okay i got one more thing to show you uh, and I'll leave that up there. I'll just turn off the prints because, oops, let's, un let's comment these out. Oops, I'm having uh, difficulties here. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, let's make a list of vectors. So I'm going to make a vector. Um, and let's make a list of vectors. I'm just going to type it out. So in, in Python, vectors are a built-in class in GlowScript v Python. So let's call this vector list. And vector stuff. I like stuff. And it's going to be a list. Now I'm just going to type in some vectors. Vector, and I have to be creative here. One, two, three. Isn't that creative? Let's make another vector. Vector negative one, zero, one. Vector, oh, comma. Vector two, negative one, negative one. Um, let's see, that's one, two, three. Uh, oh, and, and also in here, you can press return and keep adding your list over here uh, if you if that's what makes you happy. Let's see, three, I need at least vector uh, negative three, negative one, zero. I can't think of crazy things. This is hard. One more, vector one, one, one. Okay, and let's print that out. It's, it's, it's nice to print things just to make, make sure everything's working. Okay, there's my vector list of vectors. Now, what if I want to go through each item in the list and I want to print the magnitude of this vector? So I want to do something to each thing in the list. And so I have to traverse the list. I have to go through the list. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. Uh, so the first way is the, the most elegant way. Let's move this up. I like that looks feels a little bit better. Um, so the most elegant way is to say this for uh, vector thing in vector stuff. So this is a loop, and it really says take the list vector stuff, and each element in there is going to be called temporarily vector thing. And let's just do this. Print vector thing and run it 
There you go. So it went through and just printed. There's my list. I printed that already. And there's each item in the list. I'm going to move all this stuff down here because it's really annoying me. I told you I'd, I'd put it in there, but I like having my stuff up here. Okay. Let's delete. Now I want to do the magnitude. So let's print the magnitude. That magnitude is a built in function in Python. So I can just say mag. There. So mag vector thing. And that's it. Look, it went through it, went through each one and calculated the magnitude and it printed it. How easy is that? And this is a really elegant way of going through the elements in a list. Uh, because you, you assign a variable to each element and then you can just use that name like it's anything else you would do. Uh, it's super simple. Super simple. Okay. Now, there, that doesn't, there's a couple cases where that doesn't always work. Uh, so let me show you another way to do this. And I'll leave that there. So I'm going to say for uh, i in range len vector stuff colon. Now, I guess I should say this range stuff. Remember, lin gives me the length of a, uh, a variable. Um, so this is going to return the number of items in vector stuff. Range is a list that has those same numbers in there. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to show you uh, print i. So I'm going to go through and print i in this loop. And you see I get there are five elements in the list, and i is a... Vec lin range vector stuff is a list. And so I'm just going through each number in the list. You see that? And you may think that's kind of stupid. But it's not stupid. Because now I can find the magnitude. I can address each item in vector stuff with that indices. So I can say uh, print mag. Now I'm not going to say i, right? Because i is not a vector. The vector is vector stuff index i. So that vector stuff index i, i goes from 0 to 4. So this is a way to address each item in the list. If I print that out, run it, there's my, see it did it twice because I, I did it twice. Um, this is a really nice way too because it gives you more power. What if I want to say um, subtract the previous vector? Then I have to know what that previous vector is. I have to know the index number. But if you just do vector thing and vector stuff, you don't know what the item, you can't address other, other items in that list. Does that make sense? Uh, so this is the one I end up using more because if I'm trying to like build a, a list of objects, uh, then, and I want those objects to interact, I have to pick two of those objects from the list at the same time. It's much easier to deal with them with a numerical index rather than something like that. Okay. Let's see, what else? I think that's good right now. Let me just show you this. Uh, let's say h equals, no, I'll do it in another example. I'm gonna stop right there. So I'll, I'll give you this code, uh, and I'm going to use this idea of list building, and I'm not gonna add vectors to the list. I'm not gonna add numbers to the list. I'm gonna add 3D objects to the list. And that's where this gets super powerful. And that'll be my next video. And I'm going to make that right now. And then I'll talk to you later.